When the full-scale invasion of Ukraine began, a second, an unprecedented battle got underway. Websites have been taken down and defaced. Private data stolen. Broadcasts hijacked. I've traveled to Ukraine to speak to those fighting in the cyber war. To find out how governments on either side are working with these armies of vigilante hackers, unleashing forces that they might not be able to control. This is Kill Milk, the leader of a Russian hacker army that's been attacking Ukraine and its allies since his country's invasion. He despises the West and with bombastic videos like this has rallied a telegram group of hackers and supporters nearly 100,000 members strong. He wouldn't agree to a direct interview, but after weeks of asking, he sent us this video before breaking off communication. This theatrical clip from Kill Milk shows him take a NATO website offline temporarily. Some NATO websites are still experiencing availability issues. And it's not just Russians who are hacking for Russia. I'm still carrying out attacks, yeah. <laughs> These two hackers, an American and a Dutch national, have carried out disruptive but temporary attacks on Ukraine and its allies too. I was hijacking the Ukraine embassy. No target is off limits. Recently, Kill Milk called for attacks on hospitals in countries donating tanks to Ukraine. Greetings, citizens of Russia. On the other side, vigilante groups like Anonymous have joined the fight, carrying out hundreds of attacks against Russia. Recently, another group called One Fist hacked a Russian radio station to play a fake air raid siren. Alexander was one of the hackers responsible. From his flat in central Ukraine, he's carried out hacks with One Fist and a vigilante group called the IT Army of Ukraine. Its telegram group is 200,000 strong. As ordinary Russians complained online, the regulator admitted it had been hit by a large DDoS attack, a blunt but effective tool for taking a website or service offline temporarily. However, it seems the lines between vigilante hackers and military hackers have been blurred since the invasion. As the capital, Kyiv, braced for attack, Roman was helping carry out criminal hacks and building software for the war effort as part of a volunteer group. You were a big part of and one of the leaders of IT Stand for Ukraine. What happened? Look at you now. I've met a guy who was responsible for the information war. I showed him uh, all the data and all the things we've been doing. He was amazed and he said, okay, Come on, come on, Roman, come on, we need it. <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> Even before he was recruited, Roman confirms that his hacking team did work directly with the Ukrainian authorities. So they basically started to give us some targets and say what to do, when to do. What sort of targets were you, were you going for in those early days? Logistics, telecommunication, uh, service companies. There were some disruptions in, uh, in uh, uh, railway ticketing. So you took out the ticketing system for the Southern Russia Railway? For something like 20 hours or so. 20 hours, so no one could get tickets from the machines? No. That's a lot of disruption. It's the kind of attack that Ukraine's cyber military could never publicly carry out themselves as a responsible nation, but is seemingly comfortable to stand back and watch. Yeah, thank you. Mikhailo Fedorov is Minister for Digital Transformation. As the full-scale war broke out, 
it was his department that controversially set up the Telegram group for the IT Army of Ukraine. Do you think the lines have been blurred between what is and was criminal hacking and what is now accepted and encouraged by the government? I think that the year of full scale war, the Ukrainian hackers, the Ukrainian cyber specialists, показали, що, незважаючи на таке вторгнення, вони діють досить етично і не наносять зайвої шкоди будь-яким суб'єктам, окрім Російської Федерації, які задіяні в війні і напали на нашу територію. But is it your view that anyone hacking Russia currently is not doing anything criminal? Нічого не чув про тих, хто хакає Росію. Have you never heard anything about those who are hacking Russia? But there appears to be collusion on the other side too. Evidence is growing that Russian cyber military teams could be working directly with the likes of Kilmet. The Russian authorities didn't reply to our emails, but Kilmilk denied his group is linked to any special services. At Ukraine's cyber security defense HQ, they say Kilmet is a persistent problem, but they're facing attacks from dozens of other groups too. So already you've had 2,100 incidents, right? Viktor Zhora is the leader of Ukraine's Cyber Security Authority. He says attacks from suspected Russian cyber military are the most troubling and serious. Every day we deal with uh, up to uh, 10 severe cyber incidents. Reading the news in, in the UK or around the world, they might think that um, the cyber element to the conflict is just, you know, insignificant. What would you say to that? Of course, the impact of uh, strikes of uh, cruise missiles is much higher than of cyber attacks. Uh, but uh, the reason that cyber attacks uh, can bring uh, such impact uh, to Ukrainian infrastructure is also due to our cyber defending capabilities and efforts. In case we were weaker, uh, these attacks uh, uh, would be more, more destructive. Just like in the physical realm, Ukraine's defense in the cyber realm is being praised. Some sources, though, have told me that the country's been worse affected than they've been admitting publicly. They're also being aided by cyber military teams and private cyber security companies, paid for from tens of millions of dollars donated to Ukraine's cyber defense. Some predict that the severity of attacks will increase as Russia struggles on the physical battlefield. And there's a concern that hacktivists might cause serious harm if attacks get out of control. Ted is one of the main coordinators of the IT Army of Ukraine. Are you um, in danger of, of gamifying hacking in this regard. You've got a leaderboard up with the amount of attacks people are carrying out. This isn't playing, is it? This is serious criminal activity. Talking from the standpoint of Western laws, I think yes, right? But when war is coming to your country, everything is changing. There are no good or bad ways to, to fight. Thankfully, the cyber war has proven to be less destructive than the physical war. But the conflict is no doubt rewriting the rules of engagement online.